I'm Tim here with Red Wing RC, and today we wanted to give you a little bit of explanation on life batteries, uh, the life batteries that we sell. And uh, we also wanted to address questions uh, about if you need a regulator or not. The answer may surprise you on that, so that's going to be a little bit later. We also wanted to answer the question of one battery or two. Um, for further explanation on whether to use one battery or two, please check out our, our PowerBox page and view the video on that page and this will help provide you some options if you want true redundancy. Okay, so let's briefly talk about one or two batteries. Uh, our batteries come with two plugs on them, uh, one Dean style plug and one JR style plug. So you can easily run one battery to power your receiver and ignition. And the fact of the matter is that uh, if you're using 2.4 gigahertz radio, you do not need to use two batteries. Traditionally in the RC world, people used two batteries on a gas plane for one reason. And that's not redundancy, but to isolate noise. As a matter of fact, having one battery for ignition and one battery for your receiver does not provide redundancy. And we'll explain that in, in a second. So, in the meantime, though, 72 megahertz was uh, very susceptible to signal noise. So, to keep the engine from passing signal noise down to your receiver and crashing the plane, uh, pilots would use two batteries. The reality is that 2.4 gigahertz is just not susceptible to it. So, if you're using 2.4 gigahertz radio, you really don't need to be using two batteries. To test this for yourself and with your equipment, do the following. Use one battery for both your receiver and your ignition. Activate your radio test button to test the signal range of your radio. And begin with the engine off, walking away from your plane, moving the sticks on your radio. Now let's say the, the plane starts acting funny at about 90 feet. Well, go ahead and turn your engine on now and walk away doing the exact same test. And if your, your plane starts acting funny at 90 feet again, then you know that you're not getting any engine noise. Now, on the other hand, let's say that your radio freaked out at 60 feet and that this was still within the normal range for your radio's manual. We would not recommend flying with one battery, the reason being that uh, you obviously are getting some sort of engine noise. We have yet to see this happen uh, using 2.4 gigahertz radios and a single battery. Uh, we fly a lot of our planes using only a single battery. One of the reasons is we like only having one battery to charge when we go to the field. It's just really easy maintenance, not a lot to worry about. But if you want true redundancy, okay, the, the single battery is really no different from two batteries, one for the ignition and one for the receiver. And here's why. If you have one battery for receiver, one for ignition, and let's say your ignition battery fails, well, more than likely, you're going to lose your plane unless you're in an ideal position in the air. Now, if you're flying your plane and your receiver battery fails, you are pretty much guaranteed to lose your plane. It's going to you know, crash right in the position it was last headed. So, <clears throat> again, two batteries is not redundancy unless they're used in conjunction with some sort of power box that takes both signals and shares the load. If one fails, the other takes over. Now, on to whether you need a regulator or not. Um, a lot of people think that because our life batteries are two cell, 6.6 .6 volts, that they need a regulator to bring the voltage down for their ignition or maybe even their receiver. The reality is that if you would be willing to use a 6 volt NICAD or nickel metal for the exact same application, then a life is perfectly fine and here's why. A NICAD or nickel metal hydride they peak charge at 7.2 volts. Now if you take that battery off the charge and you test it, it's going to be right about 7.2 and it's slowly going to drain down over the course of your flight to 6 volts. When a life battery is charged, it also peak charges at 7.2 volts. But when you pull it off the charger, it actually drops almost immediately to 6.6 .6 volts uh, and slowly drains down to 6 volts from there as you fly. Uh, life batteries actually subject your electronics to less voltage than a 6 volt nickel metal or NICAD. So a 6.6 .6 volt life battery actually subjects your elect 
electronics to less voltage than a 6 volt battery, if that makes sense. To, to go ahead and show you this, this battery actually was just charged, was just pulled off the charger right before I started talking. Now, I know I can talk pretty well, but uh, it hasn't had a, a whole lot of time to discharge at all. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the voltage reading is on this. And you can see it's 6.66 volts exactly. If you would test this um, right off of the charger, it would probably read like 6.8. Uh, but in the, the five minutes that, that I've been talking, this has dropped to its nominal voltage. Um, now some of you might say, you know, hey, I've only ever flown 4.8 volts on my ignition, or I've ever only ever used 4.8 volt batteries. 4.8 NICADs or nickel metal hydrides, they do peak charge at 6 volts. When you take them off the charger, that's 6 volts. So it's a little less than our life batteries. So um, we've run all our ignitions for many years off these life batteries without regulators. We haven't had an ignition fail. However, if you just are not comfortable using these unregulated, by all means use regulators. We're just simply trying to give information and, and kind of education on, on the subject matter. Uh, again, there's some, some misconceptions because of the, the voltage on the label. Um, our Red Wing Life batteries come in three sizes. They come in a 3000 milliamp, they come in a 2100 milliamp, and a 1450 milliamp. And all of our batteries uh, come with both a Dean style and JR style connector as well as a balancing lead. It is important to balance lives whenever you have the opportunity. You can occasionally just fast charge them, but uh, we re recommend balancing them when possible. The, the 2100 um, is a good power option uh, if you use two of these on a 50cc with a power box, then that's a good option. If you use uh, two 1450s on a power box for a 30cc, that's a good lightweight option with redundancy. Uh, if you just want to use a single battery um, setup, then the 3000 milliamp is really good for 50cc or 30cc. And I think we used on our 100cc MXSR sample, uh, we used two 3000 milliamp batteries on a power box as well. So the sky's the limit. Kind of uh, a nice rule of thumb to remember is this. Um, in general, now this can, this can vary greatly, but in general, you're going to maybe burn about 50 milliamps per servo per 10 minute flight, 12, 10 to 12 minute flight, average flight, right? So if you take that 50 times, let's say, six servos in a plane and say 300 milliamps. So that's 300 milliamps per 10 to 12 minute flight. So if you have a 3000 milliamp battery and you divide that by 300 milliamps per flight with a six servo setup, that gives you about 10 flights. Now we'd recommend using this kind of model to figure out what batteries you want to buy. To find out exactly how much capacity you're going to have for your plane, your setup, do the following. Given the same example above, um, go to the field on a full charge on that 3000 milliamp battery that you're estimating 10 flights. Go ahead and fly for five. That's well under what you expected to get. Um, then come back home, put it on the charger, and, and don't balance charge this time because you want to get um, a reading of just the amps you're putting in. You can balance it after you're done doing the fast charge. Let's say you put back 1,000 milliamps back into the battery. That's what you burned. You burned 1,000. So you take 1,000, you divide it by five because you flew five times, that gives you 200 milliamps that you used on average per flight. Now, that's your average. You take the battery you have, 3,000 milliamps, and you divide that by your average amperage per flight, which would be 200, and you'll find that you'll get, uh, what is that, about 15 flights. So you'll get about 15 flights before your plane crashes in a blaze of glory. Now obviously don't be silly and don't, don't drive it into the ground flying every flight you have, but uh, you know if, if math tells you that you're going to be able to get 15 flights out of this thing, then you may want to fly up to about 10 times and then call it quits. So uh, anyway, we hope this has been some great information on life batteries. Check out the power boxes, learn a little bit about redundancy options there, and um, fly Red Wing RC.